Hi Algebra students, I just wanted to make a quick video introducing you to this unit and introducing you to um, a little activity that we're going to do before we even get into really a lot of the mathematics and algebra concepts that we're going to be studying this unit. So we're in unit three and we're talking about functions. Um, what does it mean for uh, in mathematics for something to function correctly and what does it mean when we talk about a function in mathematics. So real quick, I just want to introduce you to something um, that was uh, used in history in a pretty big way and uh, that also um, kind of gives you context for why you need to learn the next particular things uh, concepts that we're going to be working through so um, many of you probably are familiar with code breaking right if somebody maybe even when you were little maybe you would write a note to your friend in like a secret code that only the two of you knew um, and so that's, you know, code breaking has been a way for people to communicate with each other uh, without other people knowing what they're saying um, for a long, long time. And this is, of course, used in many different contexts. Um, one context being um, during wartime. So during World War II, there was a lot of secret messages being passed between the allies and the Axis powers and so that the enemy could not hear what you were saying or read what you were saying. Um, and so just real quick, I just want to give you a quick introduction to code breaking. Um, so just for example, if I had, if I in my, in my own mind think of A as being the first letter of the alphabet, B being the second, C being the third, and D being the fourth, then I could come up with all kinds of ways to code this into a secret code. So let's say that I wanted to take the letter that I had, and let's say I wanted to multiply that letter by two and that's going to be my secret code so just for example if i think about a being one well if i take one and multiply it by two of course i get the answer two and so i would think then in the alphabet well what is the second letter of the alphabet and so i would think oh well the second letter of the alphabet is b so that means all of my a's are now going to be coded as b's um, and we can do the same thing for the rest of these so if I think about uh, this line, so if I think times two, so B is the second letter of the alphabet, well, two times two is four. And if I think about the fourth letter of the alphabet, well, that's D. And so now every B that I see is now going to be coded as a D. And if I do the same thing here, so I would multiply by two, of course, three times two is equal to four. Uh, three times two is equal to four. Three times two is equal to six. I even typed it right there. And if I think about the sixth letter of the alphabet, well, that's A, B, C, D, E, F. So now all of my C's are going to be F's. Uh, so C becomes an F. And last but not least, if I multiply 4 times 2, I get 8. And if I think F, G, H, the eighth letter of the alphabet is H. And so all of my D's are now going to be H's. And of course, we could go through the whole alphabet like this. Now, of course, in the end, we would have to wrap back around to the beginning of the alphabet because the alphabet ends, but D's are now going to be H's. All right, and so just again, a very small example. If I then send my best friend a secret code that says this, this is the secret uh, message to them. And I say F, B, D. And I, you know, I send that, I send that string of letters to them. Then if I send this string of letters, well, anybody, just the general public would be like, FBD, what does that mean? But if my friend knows that my code was multiplying all the numbers by two, then they would be able to look and say, oh, okay, well, um, if she's, every C has now an F. So that must mean the F is now a C and every B was an A and every D was a B. And so, oh, that's the secret word cab. I don't know. Maybe that means we need to go take a cab somewhere and go somewhere. Um, but anyway, that's just a, a teeny tiny example of how coding in a very, a very easy way, a way that coding might work. Um, and so throughout history, this has been used, um, especially like I mentioned before, in, uh, in during wartime. So um, if you're if you've ever heard of what's called the Enigma machine, it was used to code military messages during the Second World War by the Nazis. And so, of course, the Nazis were the, the enemy that we were fighting against as Americans. And uh, the Germans were changing their cipher daily. So they would have a new way of coding things every day um, until a group in England and um, this guy whose name is Alan Turing 
Um, he was English, and he, in a place called Bletchley Park, um, which was led by Alan Turing, he figured out the coding system. So he figured out this very sophisticated Nazi Enigma machine and how it was coding things every day. Um, and he figured it out. And he was, of course, able to um, b break the code and translated so many um, of the Nazis' messages so that the English were able to figure them out and were able to crack the code and were able to stop the, the Nazis, especially when they were um, invading most of Europe. And so real quick, I just want to show you a quick video that sort of tells us a little bit more about Alan Turing and what he accomplished. And so, um, just again, a really, really interesting um, story from a, a time period in history where um, this kind of thing was, was really life or death. And um, again, why the importance of uh, mathematics is sort of highlighted. So, um, just um, to get us started in this unit, uh, of course, we're going to do a little bit of code breaking ourselves. And so just for example, um, we're going to be talking about input and output throughout this unit. And so if I were to put in an A, notice the rule down here. It says, what is the rule? And it's the letter plus two. So the letter and then out comes a C. It means I'm adding two values to the letter. In goes a B. What do you think should come out? Out comes a D. And in goes a Y. Out comes a... A again because we had to wrap around right because the last letter if we start with Y the next letter would be Z and if I'm adding one more, two completely to it then I would have to go back around and start at the beginning of the alphabet again um, and so that is just sort of an idea of how this sort of works um, here's one where you can figure out the rule yourself so let's look at this one so A goes in out comes B in goes B out comes D in goes C, out comes F. Can you think of what the rule might be? Yeah, this was the rule that we did at the very beginning, which was times 2. Um, so each letter is being multiplied by 2. All right, let's try one more. In goes an A, out comes an E. 
in goes a B. Out comes an H. In goes a C. Out comes a K. I'll give you a second. Remember, it was A, B, and C. If you need to pause the video, think about that for a second. The rule here actually is the letter times three and then add two. So the letter times three, one times three would be the third letter, but then you have to add two. C, uh, C is the third letter and add two to get to E. So again, these can get really complicated. Of course, the Nazi codes were incredibly complicated. Um, and so here is actually one of the Enigma ciphers that was used. Um, it was a P plus four on top of a three P plus two code. Um, and so this is just an example of like a chart that would have been used um, to help them figure out what was going on in that Enigma cipher from the Nazis. Um, and so, of course, you'll see that like if you see a Q, that's actually an A. And if you see an A, that's actually an M. And so they did the math in between, but we're going back here. So go ahead. Again, you might want to pause the video, but go ahead and see if you can use. Here's the coded back to the actual alphabet. See if you can uncode this word. All right. Did you figure it out? Well, an A is actually an M. A Q is actually an A. A W is actually a C. A L is actually an H. An O is actually an I. A D is actually an N. And a C is actually an E. And so this was coding the word machine. Um, and so your first assignment, oh, not that. Um, your first assignment in your um, in your in the next assignment folder um, is actually a code in worksheet where you're going to have to fill in a chart similar to this um, you're going to figure out well what would the code have been and then there's a code at the bottom that you're going to have to figure out and again this is just sort of an introduction to um, functions so good luck on your coding assignment